G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well it's Boxing Day uh, here in Australia, so hopefully you're all finding this uh, vlog around about Boxing Day as well, and I'd just like to wish you all a happy uh, Boxing Day. So today, rather than focusing on crypto, I wanted to focus on what I plan to do uh, with the, hopefully, uh, good profits that I make from cryptocurrencies. Uh, as I've stated before, I do plan to sell 50% of all my altcoins, pure and simple. There's not an altcoin that I'm not going to sell 50% of, uh, but I'm not going to sell 50% of my Bitcoin. I plan on selling maybe sort of 25 to 30% uh, of my Bitcoin. Uh, and look, taking profits, getting my money back, hopefully a whole lot of uh, extra money. And what I wanted to do today was talk about, you know, what do I plan with doing with that money? Well, number one is I'm going to invest in property. As you can see here, most millionaires have become millionaires by, and here's the answer right here, over the last two centuries, so that's 200 years, and it's over that, 90%, that's nearly all the millionaires in the world, have been created by investing in real estate. If it ain't broke, don't fix it and follow the money. This is where the money has been. It is getting harder and harder and harder to be able to invest in real estate. It continues to get more and more expensive and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Look, here in Australia, we're a bit unlucky. We're in one of the biggest housing bubbles in the world. We pay more per square metre than just about anywhere else in the world for land. At some stage, that is going to have a healthy correction. But look, when I say healthy correction, I'm not talking 50%, but maybe it pulls back by 15, 20, 25% or something like that. Uh, but when that happens is as good a guess as anyone's. So for me, really, once I sort of sell and I have that money in my hand, I'll have to see exactly where I'm at uh, and whether I think now's a good time to invest in property. But property is my number one goal. I wanna get into the property market. Property is where I will be putting uh, money. Now, this is probably where I'll start first. I think I'll start to look at uh, residential flats and units and things like that. Close to amenities, uh, close to universities and things like that. But uh, also, again, you know, close to kind of hubs. I know that is, uh, you know, where a lot of the people want to live these days. They want to be close to stuff. They don't want to spend hours on you know, public transport, getting to work and, you know, trying to get to schools and things like that. Although that may change with this whole COVID thing, people may want to stay away from things like this because, you know, I know here in Australia, they've had blocks of units and things like that that became, you know, you know hubs for uh, COVID-19 and things like that. But again, you know, hopefully, you know, a vaccine comes out and that's something that we don't have to worry about and we can go back to, you know, whatever the new normal is. And look, if I think that uh, flats and units will just be something that, you know, people won't want to live in in the future, I will change my mind. But at the moment, uh, there's high demand for things like this and there's less and less space to live in. We're not all going to be able to afford to live in houses. Even if we don't own them, just the rent on them alone will be sky high. But this is what I'll be looking at likely first but that may change i may just completely skip these and go to houses but then yeah houses that's what i'll be looking at i'll look, be looking for you know nothing too flash and too expensive i'll make sure i in uh investigate into the re, uh into the markets and things like that and what i'll be looking for is places that have a high return in regards to how much you pay so let's say you know the average price in australia is roughly sort of 500 to 800 thousand dollars for a house you can get them cheaper outside of the bigger cities and look i may look into those as well but let's just say i go to the bigger cities uh, and i invest in a lower price house so half a million i buy a, a house for half a million dollars i want to find one that's in a place where the rent return is sort of the highest where i've got a good cash inflow uh, happening now what i want to do with these uh, rental properties and again this is all dependent on you know how much money i can make uh, you know, through cryptocurrency and all the rest of it, but I'm not going to leverage myself up. So I'm not going to basically go out and get, you know, let's say I've got a million dollars to put into property. I'm not going to go and get $5 million worth of property and have it all leveraged up 
so at best they're maybe paying for themselves. What I definitely don't want is to, again, leverage up and then have to be contributing more money towards it to pay these off. What I wanna do is have, have them cash flow positive. So I have cash constantly coming, coming to me on a weekly to fortnightly basis. And the reason for that is I want to be able to have cash coming to me through the bear market. So once you know we hit the new all time low, I have cash that I can put back in straight away. That is my plan. I wanna have cash positive uh, assets that are making me money, not costing me money. That again, when the next bear cycle comes, I can get in nice and early and I'll have a regular cash flow coming in. So that is what I'm looking at, number one. So property. Number two, I wanna get a business. And franchise are generally a pretty good way to go. Well, actually, I'll be careful when I say that. Not always generally, but they can be. And I'm gonna put an example here of McDonald's and I'm not saying I'm gonna buy McDonald's or that's the best one, but they're true, tried and tested. They've been around for a long time. You get a good one in a good place and particularly if you own it outright, which is what I would like to do, Again, it's all dependent on how much money you know I can make. Let's say I, you know, am lucky enough and I make millions. You know, let's say three to five million dollars. And look, I'm not sure I'll make that. You know, we'll have to wait and see. You know, if I could get just one million, I would be pretty happy. Uh, and if I got just one million, it probably wouldn't be in a franchise. So a franchise is number two. So that'd be secondary. If I again was lucky enough and made millions, I'm not going to put it all into real estate. I would definitely put probably. 50% of my profits, if not a little bit more into real estate, then I'd be looking to buy some franchise. Now, I'm not guaranteed it's gonna be a McDonald's or some fast food place. Again, I'm gonna do my research and find out you know, what industry is doing really well. And again, I've heard McDonald's franchise, they cost like a million dollars here in Australia. So a million dollars is a lot. I may not have a million to put into it. What I don't wanna do is again, leverage myself up so I'm still having to put money into it. I want cash positive uh, businesses uh, and real estate and all the rest of it. So again, this is secondary. So this is if I'm really, really lucky and I get enough that I can invest in both. Some kind of franchise that's making money and that I don't have to work at. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I wouldn't work at one, but I really want one where it's gonna kind of run itself uh, and I don't have to put too much time and effort into it. But look, I may have to do that. And if that's the case, fair enough. I don't, you know, I've got a job that pays a good money. I would like to have something again that's just cash positive and I don't really have to do too much. And a franchise is what I'll be looking at. But it could be a local store, you know. Uh, in, here in Australia, we have IGA. I'm not sure about overseas, like your local shops and all the rest of it. And if I can find one that basically runs itself and uh, is cash positive, then sweet. That's exactly what I'll do. Now, if this doesn't happen, I'm not chucking all my money into you know residential units and all the rest of it. I will put a bulk of it into that, but what I have left over and what I'm planning for is at least kind of, you know, I would say a minimum of maybe 15% right through to possibly about sort of 40%. I'm gonna have cash left over, again, sitting on the side for any opportunities that come up back in the crypto space, you know, when I feel like we're at the bottom of the market again and we can start this cycle all over. So I will be taking some cash and I'll be putting it into BlockFi. I'm a part of BlockFi. If you're interested in BlockFi, I have a link down below in my About Me section or description section. Uh, go there, use that link. You can join up to BlockFi. They've always got things going on where if you join up, you'll get like a $50 or $100 or whatever it may be at the time uh, bonus for joining. And likewise, I'll get a little bit of a bonus as well, possibly something similar to you or of equal value. But this is what I plan on doing. I won't be putting too much money into the banks because the banks here in Australia are offering 0 0.25 uh, interest rates. So not even 1%, it's a quarter of 1%. And I think that is actually going down. So BlockFi currently, they are doing, where is it? Something crazy here, here we go. So on USDC, I can earn 8.6%. So that's where I'll be putting my profits until I feel like, you know, again, we've got to the bottom of the cycle and then I'll be buying more Bitcoin. 
uh, and then I'll be buying more Ethereum and any other you know, cryptocurrencies that I think will have done well. Specifically in the buy, uh, DeFi sector, I'll be looking at that again. I really do think that is the future. But whatever the new kind of uh, it thing that is coming through, because there will be new things, there's going to be new innovation, you know, whether it's in, you know, NFTs or, you know, the, the transport section, whatever it may be, I'll be looking to reinvest in cryptocurrencies. But on the way down, I will be taking my profits. And like I said, it's real estate. It's most likely a business that is cash flow positive uh, and that hopefully I don't have to put any work into. Uh, but if I do, that's all right. I don't, you know, I, I work already and I work long hours and hours all over the place. So if I can find myself uh, something that's a little bit more friendly and again is, you know, making good money, then I'll be doing that. But the rest of the cash that I have left over, I will be putting into BlockFi and, you know, I'll look around. It won't just be BlockFi. I don't want to have all my money uh, in one spot in case something uh, doesn't work. But I will be looking into BlockFi and I'll be capitalizing on that 8% or whatever it may be in the future. But there you go. That's my plan. I highly recommend that if you're investing in cryptocurrencies and particularly if you're early and, you know, you haven't been around for too long, Understand the cycles. Understand that bear markets are extremely brutal. You can lose 80 to 95% of your worth in a matter of days, weeks. Sometimes it's overnight. If you're in the wrong coin or whatever or get in at the wrong time, you can lose nearly everything overnight. If you're in at the moment, in my personal opinion, you are early. Uh, you know, Make sure you do some research before you just blindly invest in anything. And somewhere around sort of August to possibly, you know, so August 2021 through to February 2022, start to scale out, get back your initial uh, money that you put in uh, and, you know, hopefully some profit as well. And then the rest can just be your moon bags. That, that is my plan. Look, I may start scaling out even before we get to August. It's really dependent on, you know, what kind of markers they hit. I mean, if something, you know, ends up doing a 10x, then I'm going to take uh, get my investment out, bare minimum. If not, maybe take 20% out of it full stop. So that is my initial investment doubled. And then the rest is just moon bags and I'll wait and see what happens. So for me, I'm not anywhere near a 10x yet. Uh, well, some of them I'm sort of at a 10x, but uh, there are just smaller cap stuff. I haven't made, you know, crazy money with them. So I am really now just waiting to see where things go. But definitely around sort of August, I'll be starting to take some profits. At the very least, uh, I'll be taking my uh, initial investment out if I haven't already done that. All right, that's my plan. Hopefully you've got a plan. Sit down, work it out. Those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Have a plan. Stick to it. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. And I'll see you next time.